It's a pleasure to welcome Mark to game day and welcome back to BYU. <laughs> Thank you, it's great to be here. What do you think about what they've done with the place? Yeah, this is a lot different than when I played, but this is fantastic. What does it mean to you to come back to BYU? Oh, you know, so much of, um, you know, some of the greatest memories of my life happened here. And uh, so when I come back, I'm, I'm flooded with all those memories of games and teammates and friends and, and the whole experience. So it's, it's a great thing to come back. Mark, you went you went two and one against the Aggies. Yeah. What's your most memorable moment against them? Well, the most memorable moment was the game we lost. <laughs> that was not fun. <laughs> but then we came back my senior year and we had a great game against them. Played really well and beat them pretty good. And they had a really good team. They had a quarterback named Eric Hippel, a running back, Rick Paris, a defensive lineman that really played well in the NFL for Rulon Jones for a long time. Yeah. And so uh, it was fun to play against them. They had some really good players, as I said, and in and, and our senior year, we beat them pretty good. Yeah, that's Utah State used to have some dudes up there. When, when Mark was playing and I, when I was playing, we, uh, we had some battles. Isn't it a shame that you remember the one you lost? I remember the one we lost up there. We don't remember the ones we won. <laughs> yeah. So, hey, tonight the national spotlight will be on quarterback Jaron Hall, yeah. who is just having a, f a tremendous season. What has impressed you most about his play so far through the beginning of this year? Well, the thing about Jaron is he's so consistent. You know, when you look at what he's doing this year and you can kind of compare it to what he did last year, he's right on the same track. The guy is amazing. Last year, I think he completed about 66% of his passes. This year, he's right around 70, 71%. Last year, what he completed, 20 touchdown passes, five interceptions. This year, he's on pace to do about 30 touchdowns and two or three or four interceptions. His quarterback rating is pretty much consistent just about every game going back all the way through last year. He is an amazing talent. You know, I just think I, th I think so highly of him. He throws the mid range ball, the deep ball so well. He actually has a higher completion percentage on those balls than short balls, which is not that uncommon because we don't like to practice the short throws. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody wants to shoot three point shots and throw deep balls. Right? Mark, Mark, you told us before the season that where you thought one of his skills was is his running ability yeah. to extend yeah. plays, yeah. not extend it long enough to get hit. And yeah. he's done a pretty good job about avoiding hits. And I think that's a great thing. You know, that's what quarterbacks have to learn. You know, there's been comparisons to him and Russell Wilson, I know. Yeah. And Russell, you know, extends plays. He picks up first downs when he has to, but he does. He rarely gets hit. And that's the same thing with with uh, with Jaron. You know, he is very smart when he's outside the pocket. He gets yardage and then he gets down or he gets out of bounds. And I think that's that's what you have to do. You know, Mark, he's, he's getting tons and tons of uh, recognition from NFL scouts this whole week. It, it seems like he's, you know, going from third to fifth round to, to first to third round <laughs> in, in projections. So, you know, you've been there, right? Yeah. You, you have some expertise. Um, if you put your NFL scout hat on, yeah. where would you grade him right now currently? Well, I think, you know, what I would do is I would compare him to the guys that are playing. And I, I think the, the best comparison, we talked about Russell Wilson, but, you know, the guy that played here before him is a pretty good comparison. Zach Wilson played great. He and Zach are similar size. They both can run. They both can extend plays. Their statistics are very similar. I, I think he compares so well to Zach. And that's who I would compare him with. And, and, and having said that, that's why I'm rooting so much for Zach to get back in the lineup and play great in New York. Because if he does, th then you'll see a lot of attention right. to, to so, Mr. Hall. So, so basically what you're saying is he should go second. Uh, overall, <laughs> I don't know, I, I, I don't know what second overall. What, what Mark's doing is he put a lot of pressure on Zach. He's, right. and, I put some pressure on Zach. Yeah. And you know what? But these guys, like you think about, before there was a Steve Young, you know, there was a Mark Wilson and there was a Gifford Nielsen, and they went and played in the National Football League. So people thought, hey, BYU's quarterbacks are prepared to play in this league. It's shown that they are. And so Steve, Steve was, well, the first pick in the USFL draft at that time, and then, and then moved over when the league folded. But but there is something to be said for a legacy in the league, right? There, there absolutely is, you know, and, and general managers get confidence when they see a quarterback come out of BYU that does well in the NFL, especially one that compares so favorably to Zach and Jaron. So I am rooting for Zach to get back in the lineup and play great the way he can play. And, and Zach's going to start on Sunday. He's going to be back. And so he's back. And I know that if he does, Jaron's going to move up in the draft, and I believe Jaron should move up in the draft. So, so, Mark, let's stay on that topic with the quarterback you, right? Something that you were, you were a strong part of. For so many years, 
you know, guys had to wait their turn to play. You look at Steve yeah. Young having to wait behind Jimmy Mann. I mean, yeah. even Jaron Hall had to wait behind Zach Wilson. Yeah. You had to wait behind Gifford Nielsen. Yeah. That's the, th this day and age, there's so many guys that want to transfer. The second they hit adversity, they want to tra hit the transfer portal and leave. Yeah. Talk about the, the development and, and how it grew you as a player to have to wait your turn to get out there and, and learn from the guys in front of you. Well, I, you bring up such a great point. And, you know, I look back and I, the most valuable thing that I had as, you know, as progressing as a quarterback and developing as a quarterback was being in the room with all those guys because Gifford was there, then Jim, Jim McMahon was there, and then I was there, and Royce Bybee was there. Royce was an All-American in the JC world before he came here. That was an incredible room, you know. So we learned a lot from each other, and then we learned a lot by watching each other play on the practice field. So, you know, I can't imagine, you know, taking that experience away and, and leaving and bypassing that whole thing. Because in my mind, that's why I developed the way that I did. And I, I have to believe it had an impact in the way Jim developed and Steve developed and Robbie developed and all of us. It was just the way, just the way it went. One common denominator in all that was Lavelle Edwards. He played for the Aggies. He coached the Cougars, coached you guys, of course. Uh, tonight, Patty will be honored lighting the Y during the pregame festivities in perfect setting with Utah State here. Maybe the last game in a long time between these two. What's your favorite Lavelle memory? Oh, there's – wow. You should have prompted me because there's so many <laughs> things now that are running, running through my mind. You know, I think Lavelle was just – you know, he was a genius about what he did and about the way he went about it. And – the and he was courageous. You know, when he decided to make this transition from being a running team to a passing team, he did so because he knew that we couldn't compete nationally by trying to run the ball the way everyone was running the ball in the early 70s because he just did not believe he could recruit guys big enough up front and the kind of running backs you needed to compete with the big boys playing that kind of football. And so he pivoted and shifted entirely 180 degrees, even though he didn't really understand the passing game, but no one did in the mid right. early 1970s. He cobbled together a staff and then he did the most important thing. He committed to it. He committed to it. And then he went and found the talent to, to, to coach it. And then came the, and once we had some success with Gary Scheide, right. then guys like me wanted to come. And then the game was on, and, and, and it all, all the credit is to Lavelle. He was a visionary, he was courageous, very intuitive, very smart guy, and then we all loved playing for him, and that was a big component of it as well. I love the story you told, uh, and we'll wrap it up with this one. When you got here, you'd never played with a leather foot before, yeah. coming from the state of Washington. <laughs> yeah. Your first adjust adjustment was to the very ball that would make you famous. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, I remember that, uh, again, in Seattle, it rains, right? So we don't use leather footballs in high school. We play with rubber footballs in high school, and they have a certain tackiness to them. And leather footballs don't feel at all like a, a rubber football. And so, yeah, that was a big transition. That was a big transition for me. Well, you got it figured out. You've been a great, <laughs> great career, great ambassador for BYU. We're so happy to have you with us here tonight. Well, thank you for having me. The thank great you. Mark Wilson.